And how the hell is everybody doing today? So welcome. Happy Monday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, we're going to wait for some people to get on as we normally do. I just wanted to talk about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to talk about how being fat makes you crazy. Uh, uh, so uh, we're going to talk about the actual studies and we're going to talk about the data that shows there is direct correlation between being obese, neural inflammation, cognitive dysfunction, immature behavior, and those such of things. So uh, if this is going to hurt your feelings, I strongly suggest you don't fucking watch. Uh, that I don't understand why we can't get there in society where if there's actually something that's actually going to hurt your feelings, you feel the need to tell the person not to say it. Uh, so uh, I wish we could get there faster, especially on platforms like YouTube. Uh, but if we cannot, we cannot. Thus, I'm just going to say this shit any fucking way. So how's everybody doing? We got a lot of people pouring in. Amelia, Madison, Raphael, The Beast, uh, Ashley Curry, Madison, Michelle, how are you doing? Lots of lots of familiar names up there uh, at the pinned comment on YouTube. And I already put it in the comments up here. Jessica, how you doing? Dennis, how you doing? And we are running a couple's Valentine's Day special for coaching. We are going to do a two for one coaching where we will coach a couple for three month blocks for the same price as one person. So it is basically a two for one special for Valentine's Day because couples that work out together and develop a healthy lifestyle together can stay together and lead happy and healthy lives. I would also like to point out that at the, up here at the, oops, excuse me, up here, uh, right up here, we have uh, our sponsor for their, uh, the last couple of videos, but I just wanted to give them another shout out. Adam and Eve at adamandeve.com. Use the code fitness and you can get 50% off any one item. And that comes with free shipping of that item too. They're an amazing company. They've been around 50 years. They have a 24 hour, uh, 24 seven customer service line, 90 day return policy. They do discreet packaging for those of you that get embarrassed. I want the mail person to know I'm having a good fucking time, but um, why the fuck not, right? Uh, and, uh, I mean, seriously, if we can know the fucking therapies everybody's taking, people can know that you fucking ordered from Adam and Eve to have a good fucking time between you and your fucking spouse or you and your fucking significant other. I don't fucking understand the problem, but, uh, they, uh, great, great, great selection size inclusive. You should check those out again, adamandeve.com. Check that out right there. 50% off. If you use the code fitness. Okay. That's my code on there. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Hello. Good to catch up one of these lives. How the fuck you doing? Kelly, uh, Emma, how are you doing? Madison, doing great. How are you? I'm doing fucking excellent. Excellent. Uh, Brianna, how the fuck are you? Nice to see you too. Let's see. Some entertainment for your break after work. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate it. Discount has come in clutch a few times for you. Outstanding, Jessica. Outstanding. Hey, everyone. I'm going to have to listen while I warm up in my workout. Excellent. Uh, Sophia, fat liberation. This has now gone over the line. So I wanted to thank Sophia for showing up to present our example of how being obese makes you fucking crazy. Uh, we appreciate you. So... Very good job. Very good job. Uh, no shame in the game. Absolutely not. Hi, all. And uh, Elizabeth and Anna, how are you? So, and again, everybody, oh, everybody say hi to our example of how being obese makes you crazy. Okay. So what we're going to do, seeing as how, I'm going to wait, I'm going to give it another just minute and a half uh, for this. So uh, Destiny Haynes, how you doing? How the fuck is everybody? This is, this is a very, very, very good Monday afternoon. I got up at four o'clock in the morning this morning because my insomnia said the fuck I was. Uh, and I have been going non goddamn stop ever since making content and doing and reading research. Uh, me and Mark had a nice, uh, nice, you know, uh, text conversation about some future things that are going to happen that are very fucking very soon, very soon. So uh, I hope everybody's having a great fucking day. I really do. I, I hope everybody had a fucking awesome day and they get their week off to an awesome fucking start. Um, and I want everybody, I want to preface this with at no point in time am I in trying to hurt anybody's fifis with this. This is just very, very real. These are actual studies. These are actual data. This is actual real shit uh, that shows that being morbidly obese is not only just unhealthy for you physically, but definitely, definitely is bad for you mentally too. Not to mention the fact that obviously there's self, you know, the self, uh, you know, self-image issues and how the person feels. It puts the person in uh, a hormonally fucking poor state because estrogen levels are higher because fat is estrogenic and releases estrogen at a higher rate. Um, doing great. I was up at 4 a.m. as well. I just, my eyes just pop the fuck open. Just pop the fuck open. So I don't know why. It's two days in a row too because I woke up at four o'clock yesterday on Sunday for absolutely no fucking reason. 
Um, I don't necessarily get up early. I try to get up about six o'clock, to be honest, dude. And then I just fucking, my eyes just pop the fuck up and I have no idea why. Um, shout out all early birds at 4 a.m. Again, uh, uh, why I'm here. Uh, I don't know. Big snowstorm here. Shovel the snow in shorts and water shoes. Wim Hof style. Good for you. I'll pass on that shit. Okay. So what we are going to do is we are going to share some tabs, share some tabs. The first one is just straight up. Boom. And I'm going to pull this down so I can then view it. And then I definitely need to pull this over and down. I should have prepared all this shit, but I didn't. <laughs> How about that? Just I fucking didn't. So uh, boom. All right. Obesity and neuroinflammation, a pathway to cognitive impairment. So the abstract of this study, and you can get the full text links right there, but this is just the abstract and we're going to go from there. Let's see if I can get the full text links. Boom, boom, boom. Do I have to pay for this one? I do not. So what we're going to do is this. Bam. Okay. Obesity and neuroinflammation, a pathway to cognitive impairment. So obesity is a growing problem worldwide. And this is from, let's see, this is from, what's the date on this? 2014. 2014, we were under like 40% obesity. Crazy shit. Obesity is a growing problem worldwide and is associated with a wide range of comorbidities, including cognitive dysfunction. In this review, we will address the evidence that obesity and high fat feeding diet, high fat feeding can lead to cognitive dysfunction. We will also examine the idea that obesity associated systemic inflammation leads to inflammation within the brain, particularly the hypothalamus, and that this is particularly responsible for the negative cognitive outcomes. Thus, obesity and high fat feeding lead to systemic inflammation and excess circulate, uh, circulating free fatty acids, circulating cytokines, free fatty acids, and immune cells reach the brain at a level of at the level of the hypothalamus and initiate local inflammation that's within the brain, including uh, micro, uh, microbial, microbial proliferation. Blech. Sorry, I couldn't get that out. This local inflammation likely causes uh, synaptic remodeling and neurodegeneration, which within the hypothalamus, altering internal hypothalamic uh, circuitry and hypothalamic outputs to other brain regions. The result is disruption to cognitive function mediating by regions such as the hippocampus, Amygdala and rewarding process centers. So the reward process centers that make it so you like what you're seeking out. Central inflammation is also likely to affect the region, the these regions directly as they're going to swell themselves. Thus, central inflammation is obese. Uh, central central inflammation in obesity leads not just to disruption of hypothalamic satiety signals and perpetuation of overeating, but also to negative outcomes of cognition. So basically what that last sentence says is, while the, the inflammation that is coming from obesity also makes you hungrier because it affects the hippocampus uh, in satiety and, and your satiety signal. So it's harder to feel full because you are obese. You are not actually starving. Like I did a thing on Tess Holiday earlier where she's like, you know, I've been starving myself. Like, no, you fucking haven't. You may have felt like you were because you are in fact fucking cognitively malfunctioning. Like, uh, I mean, it is just reality. This is biological fact, you know? Uh, and then uh, not only does it has with satiety, but it does affect cognitive function, cog cognitive outline. So let's go down here. Do, 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 do. Systemic inflammation independently, independently of and associated with obesity has been linked to faster cognitive decline in the elderly. So basically it's some people actually think that uh, Alzheimer's is a form of diabetes. It's called type three diabetes, but uh, it is absolutely noted that they are cognitively they cognitively decline quicker when they're obese. Uh, elderly people do. I've seen this myself because that's the type of healthcare I used to do. I was mainly focused on elderly care, hospitals, and uh, skilled nursing, long term care, that sort of thing. So, and with dementia includes AD, this metabolic syndrome, including inflammation and obesity and systemic inflammation, have been both. Identified as independent risk factors for depression symptoms, depressive symptoms, cerebral white matter lesions, and cognitive dysfunction in older people. So the lesions that they're talking about oftentimes are what people uh, are calling, uh, are, are calling, <laughs> I love this, don't trust the source. Uh, don't, don't, don't trust the, 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 the study. Okay. Uh, bunches of references. Here we go. Now we're going to go to the next one. That's the one I used right there. 
here we go. And da -da -da -da. this is the full. This is obesity-related cognitive impairment, the role of uh, endothelial dysfunction. Obesity is a global pandemic associated with micro, micro, uh, micro endothelial dysfunction. Microvascular endothelial, and endothelial dysfunction has recently emerged as a significant risk factor for the development of cognitive impairment. In this review, we present evidence for clinical and preclinical studies supporting the role of obesity in cognitive impairment. Next, we discuss how obesity-related hyperinsulin, hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistance, and systemic inflammation, and gut uh, diabetes leads to cognitive impairment through induction of endothelial dysfunction and disruption of blood-brain barrier. Finally, we outline the potential clinical uh, utilitary of dietary interventions, exercise, and bariatric surgery in circumventing the impacts of obesity and cognitive dysfunction. So that just gives you the abbreviations. Clinical studies. Clinical studies evaluating links between obesity and cognitive impairment demonstrate in inconsistent findings, which is very true. Some support an association between obesity and cognitive impairment, while others fail to demonstrate a relationship. Reviewed, blah, blah, blah. These inconsistencies findings may be due to variations in study design. First, clinical studies may differ based on the population age, which consists of early life, uh, 4 to 18 years old, early to midlife, 19 to 65, and mid uh, midlife to late life, 65 years older. Midlife is up to 65. How fucking yeah. Overall studies suggest that early and midlife obesity are associated with worsening cognitive outcomes. Of these two populations, as these two populations age, midlife obesity has the most adverse effect on cognition. In fact, lower scores on the mini mental state examination, the MMSE, correlate with midlife obesity, cognitive performances on tests involving visionary, visual memory, uh, organization, executive function, attention to visio monitor, uh, visio? Motor speed was worse in independent central obesity in, in midlife. A previous study reported that late life obesity correlated with better performance on attention and executive functions. So later in life, if you get to be obese when you're elderly, it actually might help you is what this was trying to say with cognitive impairment. But if you are fat as fuck when you're between 18 and 65, you're going to decline much, much quicker. Overall, these studies suggest that aging may play a role in the obesity-related cognitive impairment. However, the mechanisms have not been evaluated. In addition to cognitive deficits, recent uh, data suggests that different differences in brain structure in obese and non-obese population are present. For example, volume of brainstem and uh, dyscephalon uh, reduction are noted in early childhood, early adulthood obesity. So basically, if you are obese when you are an early adult, uh, think Sophia. Um, it causes greater cognitive decline quicker. Likewise, lower cordial thickness, as was observed in the left superior frontal and right uh, medial orbitofrontal cortex in similar groups of patients, which may provide some explanation about the association between obesity and cognitive dysfunction in obese individuals. Others have demonstrated that population have increased BMI, displayed decreased global brain volume and gray matter volume with decreased neural uh, viability in both frontal and uh, precortical uh, parietal cortexes. Excuse me. Cortices, excuse me. I'm actually going to look that up. Okay. I'm saving that one. I'm going to read that study later. I haven't read that one yet. Similar uh, reduction in global white matter in uh, integrity and atrophy of temporal frontal uh, occipital cor cortices, hippocampus, hippocampus, thalamus, and midbrain have also been noted in other populations with increased BMI. So while it is something that it's hard to just kind of admit these are actual real fucking things, people. I mean, it's, this is a real actual, like, issue for people. Um, let me see here. I'm going to look at the next one, including this. Oh, this one's interesting. This one's kind of interesting. Here's another full study. Let's get to, whoops. Here we go. Okay. I, did, I thought I lost you guys for a second. I need to get back to you. Fucking scared the fuck out of me. And we're still good. All right. And... So the incidence of obesity in middle age, age is increasingly marketed and in a parallel to the prevalence of metabolic disorders, including cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes is also rising. Numerous studies have demonstrated that both 
Obesity and metabolic disorders are associated with poor cognition performance, cognitive decline, and dementia. In this review, we will discuss the effects of obesity on cognitive performance, including both clinical and preclinical observations, and discuss some of the potential mechanisms involved, namely inflammation and, vascu uh, and vascular and metabolic alter uh, alterations. Obesity can have damaging effects on many organ systems. Most, many of the comorbid conditions are related to metabolic syndrome, characterized by a large waist measurement, high triglyceride levels, glucose intolerance, and hypertension, and thus risk factors for the development of, of, of non-insulin dependent type two diabetes, mellitus, and systemic hypertension, coronary artery disease, and heart failure. Moreover, the incidence of respiratory disease, such as obstructive sleep apnea, which is a very big problem, gastrointestinal, excuse me, <coughs> <coughs> Woo! Sorry about that. You look up into the lights and then it happens. <coughs> okay. Not COVID. Don't worry about it. Anyway. Moreover, the incidence of respiratory disease, such as obstructive sleep apnea, gastrointestinal and mus uh, musculoskeletal disorders, uh, thrombi that's basically, I can't pronounce that word, it's thrombosis, uh, stroke and cancer are increased with obesity. So basically, if you're obese, you're in for sickness and illness, as I've stated a gajillion times. Um, let's see. In addition, associates between obesity and impaired cognitive function, as well as risk of dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease, have more recently been recognized. We, uh, when we consider the, po the growing population of overweight and obese people worldwide, and especially in America after the great fattening of 2020, um, along with the increased aging population, understanding that uh, pathophysiology of obesity on the central nervous system, and in particular, those subregions important to learning, memory, and executive function is essential. Uh, basically, then we're gonna get to the one here soon, obesity and cognitive dysfunction. Mild cognitive impairment. A growing body of research indicates that obesity in midlife is a pred uh, predictor of mild cognitive impairment in old age. Cognitive, uh, cognitive aging is normally a process where in older adulthood, there is structural and functional changes that result in deterioration of cognitive ability. However, even when, uh, when controlling for cognitive aging, studies have shown negative correlation between BMI and, glo and global cognitive performance. Uh, a cross-sectional cross -section, cross longitudinal study with over 2,000 middle-aged -work workers supported the linear association between BMI and cognitive function. It's linear association. That means the fatter you are, for the longer you are, the worse it's going to be. Um, and cognitive function de determined by the World List Learning Test, which evaluates verbal learning and memory and digital symbol substitution test, which assesses attention, response speed, and visual memory coordination. Obese people recall fewer words from the list uh, in the word list learning test and took longer to complete DSST relative to normal weight individuals. In other studies, in other study combining ages from 20 to 82, overweight and obese people exhibited poor ex executive function, test performance, and lower than normal weight adults with no evidence of BMI times age interaction. Across Studies the different cognitive function, fu different cognitive domains analyze make it analyze make it difficult for to draw absolute comparisons. But impairment of specific or, uh, cognitive domain such as executive function and short term memory have been consistently identified in obese individuals when compared to normal weight counterparts. So I'm going to pause here for a second because again I've just you know basically rain man you a bunch of fucking information. Um. Uh, Let's see. Poor cognition, facts over feelings, Sophia. It's slow suicide, bless you. Uh, that's a nice question. Still have problems uh, with that last five kilograms, 25 down already. Great, great fucking job. Anyway, bless you, bless you, bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Are the studies based on Western people who get uh, get that big and highly processed food or are the same mental decline born out, uh, born out in ways, say, sumos and strongmen who tend to have cleaner diets? Strongmen do not have cleaner diets. Sumo do have much cleaner diets. Strong men do not necessarily have cleaner diets. Uh, most strong men I know eat brownies every fucking day. I'm just you know, When you get that big, dude, you, I mean, when you're a 350-pound person that works out for two or three hours a goddamn day, you're burning a shit ton of fucking calories, and you really, really, really need to fucking get some, some calories in. It's Eating 5,000 calories of other foods is very, very hard. So they do depend on – they don't eat very clean, just to be real. Um, not the ones that I've met, at least. So – Let's see. Let's see and then tell you you're beautiful. Oh, uh, uh, da -da. everybody's arguing with Sophia. And again, I, Sophia, thank you for showing up and providing the example. We appreciate it. Um, 
it, it does explain something to me though, as I've been known to talk kind of fast. So Sophia, at any given time due to your cognitive dysfunction for being obese, if you need me to talk slower, just like kind of click in, okay? Um, maybe that's, maybe that is the issue. Maybe the issue is that like, it's not actually that they just dislike me and shit like that. It's yet that they just can't understand me because I talk too fast for them and they have cognitive impairment. So, and I'm not trying to be mean, like I, I'm really not, but let me tell you something. It's been five years, people, five fucking years that I have dealt with, uh, this crazy bullshit from the, from these people. I try to help anybody get healthy as, po as much as possible. I have, no, I have nothing against anybody. If you want to get healthy, I don't care what the fuck race you are. I don't care where you're fucking from, what fucking language you speak. I don't care what fucking gender you are. I don't care what gender you fucking claim to be. I don't care what your fucking hair color is, skin color is, religion, um, age. I don't give a fuck. I, I don't. I, I don't. If you want to get healthy, I'll try to fucking help you. No shit. I mean, Crystal and I have dedicated our fucking lives to this. Our, our fucking lives to this. But in reality, don't expect me to fucking sugarcoat anything for you. You've obviously eaten enough sugar. You know, if you're a morbidly obese person uh, in society, and I'm not talking if you fall into the morbidly obese range, but you want to fucking make an argument about your fucking thing. If you're a 350 pound person or 300, if you're a 300 pound woman or 300 pound male, shut the fuck up. You're not healthy. I mean, unless you're extremely tall, like the fucking there's NBA players that are like 6'9 that weigh 285. You know, like, I mean, and they're athletes. So give me a motherfucking break. Uh, but if you want to get your feelings fucking hurt by the shit I say, especially after reading studies, you know, data, fuck off. You know, I mean, for, for real, come back when you're ready to fucking accept reality. I, I'll totally still help you. You know, I have multiple clients right now that openly will tell you that they fucking hated me. Uh, I, have, I, have, I have several clients right now that started as fucking uh, Internet trolls being pissed at me for saying shit about fat acceptance. Several that I fucking will gladly help forever. I mean, as long as they need my help, I'll fucking give it to them because that's how I fucking go. That's what who the fuck I am. That's what I'm going to fucking do. But I can say this. If you got some fucking stupid shit to say, understand, I'm giving it to you both barrels. I'm fucking done being nice. Like I've been I've been put, you know, pussyfooting around for two fucking years after you know, trying not to fucking make sure I don't get the channel deleted. Um, and staying off of this fucking channel to, to a great degree because like I can barely say shit. Well, the reality of it is, if YouTube would fucking dock this fucking channel, I can just go straight over to Rumble and shit like that, and you guys can catch me there. But if I'm hurting your feelings by saying truth shit about fucking data and facts and studies and shit like that, about anything, about anything I've said in the last two years especially, if anything I've said made you upset at me, you cannot disprove it because it's actual data, stats, and facts. So live with that shit. You can dislike me for saying it, and you can dislike how I say it, and you can dislike how it makes you feel when I say it, because I'll take that as a fucking compliment. Because if you dislike me saying data so much, that means it's, you're actually thinking about the fucking data. And people say, no, you're just turning them off and shit like that. Nah, they get so viscerally pissed off because it fucking rings true in their fucking head. If it didn't, if they didn't actually listen, it, it would not upset them. If it was, if I wasn't speaking to their mind, to their heart, they would not get upset. They would brush it off. But instead, they get super fucking pissed. They get super upset. They fucking have a very serious visceral reaction. That's how I know that they're actually fucking listening. That, that, that's how I know that they're fucking listening. So does it bother me? Not really. I mean, fucking, it, you know, when you want to live in a delusional world, why should I fucking, why should I get upset about that? But in reality, understand that I think that that means that they're actually fucking listening. Like people show up to these fucking lives and they fucking, they, they want to act like they're not listening. They want to act like they don't fucking care and I'm wrong and shit like that. I have yet to have anybody be able to prove that gravity doesn't fucking exist. I mean, people like, the, it, you know, uh, two or three years ago, they tried to get some, the fat acceptance doctor to fucking debate me and I made him look like a fucking fool. Because he can be a doctor all he wants. When you're trying to fucking live in the fucking land of unicorns, fairy tales, and fucking glitter, you know, you can't, you can't actually fucking sit on a position of fucking knowledge. You can't actually fucking say, well, you know, weight stigma is an actual real problem. So people's feelings about how, they, how fat they, they are, that's a problem. Me saying, like, me saying that you're fat, you should lose weight because your health and well, society at this fucking stage, if that hurts your feelings, that's because you know it's fucking true. That's because you know it's true. If you don't like me saying that if you have a morbidly obese 13-year-old and you are not doing everything possible 
to fix that shit, that's abuse. Like it, if it happens where your kid gets to be morbidly obese, because whatever reason, because an undiagnosed, you know, an undiagnosed disease that you did not actually take action on, because yes, there are, there are conditions that cause people to have a lower basal metabolic rate and all sorts of shit. Or maybe the kid can't be ambulatory because whatever, and they continue to eat and you don't address that shit. Fine. But once you realize the kid's morbidly obese and you continue on and just let them be morbidly obese or even worse yet, you fucking make it seem like there's not a problem with it. You're abusing your fucking child. And if that upsets you, fuck off. I'll try to help you. I'll try to help your child. I'll try to help whatever, whoever we fucking can. But let's not live in fantasy anymore. Like for real. As we, uh, here's the reason why I give these people a pass, especially with all the death threats and all that shit, because they've caught that you can clearly tell when you're talking to some of these people that they are not cognitively with it. You can clearly tell that all this data is fucking true. And by the way, I mean, I just read like four or five studies. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of studies that show everything from immature behavior all the way up to not being able to cognitively perform at work. So many things. There's so many studies that fall along these lines because it makes complete sense. When you are in a chronic inflammatory state, your brain's in your body. It's going to get inflamed too. You know, I mean, it's just fucking reality. So I don't get pissed at them. I think, you know, the only time I actually get upset, upset is when there is a fat influencer or not even a fat influencer, but a person trying to say to fat people, like, you're just fine the way you are. And the problem is, the problem is actually weight stigma. People mentioning your weight, they're the problem. Fuck that. I, I, that is fucking sad. That is a lie tell, told to try to win popularity or told to try to make the other person feel better so you can feel good about making the other first person feel better. You know, if you're going to be such a fucking coward that you don't want to speak the truth to somebody, just don't fucking talk to them. But lying to an obese person, telling them that they're fine, is fucking cruel. It's cruel. It really is. It's like buying an alcoholic a shot. It's fucking cruel. It's fucked up. Uh, truth hurts no shit. No, she's not. I mean, I, I don't even. I don't. I honestly think it's just a troll. I think it's just a troll having fun. I really do. But Sophia does allow us to fucking talk about other topics. So, thank you to thank you to Sophia for showing up and looking stupid. Um, let's see. Uh, what clinched it for me was knowing the process of all the poisonous things happening inside my body. I thought it was disgusting. Exactly. Is there anything? Is there anything on bipolar and obesity? Self medicating. Uh, uh, psycho self medicating psychological issues using sugar to get uh, to get a dopamine rush. I don't know. I, I have not read up on that, which is weird because I do like study. I do I do look up shit on bipolar because I have several bipolar uh, friends and clients and stuff like that. But um, that's that's a little weird that I don't. <laughs> just to be honest, uh, give me a second here. But I want to make sure that that's done. But that's kind of weird that I don't, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Sophia, I think you secretly want to sign up for Alan's coaching. For all I know, she could be one of the clients. <laughs> for real. Like, for all I know, she could be. Um, 300 pounds sounds like, like such a pain on your body. It's fucking horrible. I mean, it, it, it is. It, I mean, 300 pounds. I was 270 and I was like, holy fuck. I don't, I don't understand how people can fucking get bigger than that. I suggest that people who are obese invest in a pulse, oxom a pulse oximeter. Uh, at least it will show relative lack of oxygen in the body. That's another thing, too. They don't process oxygen as well. There's all sorts of hormonal issues, so much. I'm 55, down 50 pounds, from uh, down from an A1C of 14, 14, 14, 4 fucking teen to 5.6. Good for you. Good for you. 14. That's a fucking wake-up call. Um, good for you, Susie Young. Uh, good for you. Uh, why do you waste? Uh, why do you waste your time here? You could be fruitfully spending it eating Burger King. Oh, talking about things. So, so, yeah. um, thank you, Alan. Uh, coincident that this is the topic of conversation. My mother in long-term care facility needs dialysis from uncontrolled diabetes type two, and now suffering from severe dementia. It happens. It's unfortunate. And I'm very sorry for your plight. I'm very, very sorry for your plight. So. Um, Dementia is just fucking, that's the fucking wicked, that's the wicked disease of our time. It really is. Let's see. You were muscular, you were, you were muscular at 250. I'm not that muscular, dude. 
do you did do you notice a difference in your cognition between your heaviest and now, or is it more of a, more for the sedentary? Um, I do think I'm quicker now. Like, I mean, I, I and I do think I assimilate information a lot better, but I, that could have something to do with my sleep being better too. Norm, normally, like I will, I keep popping my eyes up at four in the morning, but that could have something to do with my sleep being better and me being better hydrated and watching out for my nutrition, taking better care of my body and the hormonal changes. I can't speak to it being actually brain inflammation. I was puffy as fuck though. That's for fucking sure. Um, that's for fucking sure. Breathe not. Nah. Man, I'm fucking good. Because of my mother's issues and the death of my father, also from uh, CKD, I have lost 30 pounds and now have my, uh, myself and my daughter on regular diet and uh, exercise daily. That's fucking amazing right there. Amazing, 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 amazing. That's amazing. Great fucking job. That's how you take care of fucking family. I mean, you, you don't just fix yourself. You fix the shit that you, your kids are doing too. Great fucking job. I love it. Please keep it up. People like you don't exist, do not exist in uh, those who don't know it. Uh, they will realize one day, appreciate everything you've been saying. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. Uh, I'm glad really because I'm at the age where several friends are in bad shape and two of which are no longer on this planet. It fucking catches up to people very fucking quickly. It really, really does. Now, let's see. I'm 30 pounds from 232 last year at this time and feeling awesome. Uh, Sophia, if you took a while. In all seriousness, what is the best workout for someone that's a beast and is uh, that isn't swimming something that can be done early, early in? Go for a walk. Go for a walk, do some yoga. Uh, you know, anything that is you know, like anything that is low impact is good, you know? Um, but you're more a beast. Running is, is not a great idea. It just is not. And I know that walking farther might take more time. But if you're an obese person, you should be very invested in getting not obese. You know, that's the thing. Like, you know, you look at before work, get some work, get some work in afterwards. If you think if you think you don't have time, if you're a morbidly obese person. Don't think you have time to take care of yourself. You should fucking need that time. You should, because you're not going to take care of yourself while you take care of yourself much fucking longer. I mean, that's the that's the reality. Like, you, like, if you're with a obese person, you better prioritize your health very fucking very soon. Very fucking soon. Prioritize your health because if you don't, it is going to fucking cut up with you very rapidly. And you will wish you did. You will be you know, the TV you watch it or whatever you do at night instead of watching some extra yoga, instead of watching nutrition, that is not going to seem fucking worth it. it once, once you're mobile, that is not going to seem worth it once you start having fucking problems. With your heart, the problems with your blood sugar and shit. That's not going to seem worth it. You should absolutely prioritize your health. That's the number one thing. You're especially horribly obese. You know, I mean. It would be different. I'm all for accepting people who they are. The, the biggest issue is when people start fucking acting like you know, it, there's not, like when, when there's, there's societal lies being told, when society starts lying to themselves about the health factors of it. It's fucking crazy, you know? Uh, Mr. Warren, I don't know what you're about. So.
All right, hopefully this is good. Yeah, you're frozen. You're frozen now. Hopefully this worked out. Like I have no idea what happened right there. Sometimes the fucking internet reboots. I don't know. Fucking, it is what it is. Uh, meta sensors, no shit, no shit. YouTube bumped him down to 480p automatically, and it's fr frozen. Guess the internet gave his internet gave out. I'm back, motherfuckers. I'm back. So sorry about that. And if I and I've got a backup plan in case it happens again. <laughs> How about them apples? So I've got my phone ready in case it happens again. Anyway, better now. You're back. I'm back, motherfuckers. I'm back. I don't forget what I was saying, though. So I really do. I forget what I was saying. I was answering questions and shit like that. So I wanted to go over those studies, but at the same time, I wanted to answer a bunch of questions. So if you guys have actual questions, Q&A questions, let me let me know. Uh, so many reverse type 2 diabetes with diet, including my mom. You can easily reverse, not easily, but you can reverse type 2 diabetes. Um, that is absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, doable. Whoop. I'm a female, was 200 pounds in 2014. You helped me and motivated me every day. Now I'm 135. Visible muscle and training others. Thank you very much. That's fucking awesome. Hannah, fucking out fucking standing. That's what fucking hero looks like. I love that shit. I fucking love, 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 love that shit. I fucking absolutely love it. You know why? Because people can say whatever the fuck they want. But I know from the messages Crystal and I get all the fucking time, I know that from how like we're, how we're, we're addressed, uh, by other people. I know we help people. And if a bunch of people get their fucking fifis hurt while I'm helping other people, that's their fucking problem. That's a feel so much better after losing 133 fucking pounds, 133 fucking pounds. That's fucking amazing. That's amazing. It's amazing. My dad thinks that, uh, love means food. And you know what? I can understand that. A lot of Italian households think that a lot of fucking Italian households think that a lot. A lot. So give me one second here. I'm going to get my backup ready just in case this fucking thing craps out on me again. But anyway, uh, that's awesome. Congratulations, Hannah. I, I've seen uh, I've seen what morbid obesity does. My mother-in-law died as a result of it. It's fucking horrible. But that's the thing. People don't understand. It's not even a matter of being mean or it's not a matter of trying to fucking hurt people's feelings. It's a matter of trying to save people's motherfucking lives. You know? Aaron Morgan, how the fuck are you? Um, yeah, no shit. 133 pounds. That's a fucking, that's gangster. That's gangster rock star right there. Um, let's see. And yes, the 14 A1C is huge wake up call. That's fucking big. No shit. That's some fucking big, that's a big fucking number. That's a scary ass number right there. I'd be fucking terrified, but great fucking job. You still have 20 or 25 to 35 pounds, 25 to 30 pounds to go. Uh, to lose, but you're uh, five to six miles walks a day, and you and you survive the uh, the pandemic. Great fucking job, good for you. No shit, very fucking awesome. My only question to you, Alan, if you had someone in your family who happens to be exactly like Sophia, how would you deal with them? I fucking very straight up honest told them they need to lose weight. I have people in my family like that. I've had people in my family like that. One of my very best friends uh, for years and years and years and years and years, uh, Jeff McCool from Oxton Creek. I had a very serious conversation with him about three years ago. And told him that he, was, he wasn't going to fucking lose weight. He was going to fucking die. And he's lost about 120-some fucking pounds. And I, I, I'm sorry, but that's love. You know, I, I, don't, I don't, like, that's the thing. I don't even understand how people get there that they think I'm this fucking meanie head. You know, I, I mean, I really don't. Like, uh, it's not like I fucking, you know, go overtly out of, uh, it's all blurry. Give me a second. Alright. I don't know what the fuck's up. Stream struggling again. It seems to be the time of day. It seems to be the time of day. So I do not know what the fuck I'm telling you. Uh, I really can't deal with them unless they come come to you and directly ask for help. No shit. Make sure that's turned off so it doesn't fucking ring in my ear like that. Um stream struggling again. Obese fat people get so offended for talking of the facts I know. Hey, Alan, love the show. How's it hanging? It's hanging pretty fucking well. Uh, just recently lost my 100th pound. Boom! It's fucking amazing. That's a fucking hero right there. That's fucking awesome. Awesome, I tell you. Awesome, awesome. 
So, yeah, it seems a little fuzzy and a little bit out of fucking whack, but I'll fucking deal. I will fucking deal with it. So let me see if I can. Yeah, I can do. I can work work both together at the same fucking time. That is outstanding. Congrats, Kelly. Just lost your hundred pound. You know how do you like the thing is like people don't understand how it's just it's it's just basic. Like I did a video on Tess Holiday today because she is still claiming that she's anorexic. This woman, this this woman could have lost one hundred fifty fucking pounds in the last two years. Uh, she, I mean, she has everything at her fucking fingertips. <laughs> it's happening again. I'm blaming Meta sensors and YouTube. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I mean, it, it looks like it's it looks like it's it's a uh, it's it's an overlay thing. I don't know. My only problem: uh, none of my old clothes fit. That's fucking amazing. Good fucking job. Good fucking job. Um, I hate these fucking bots. Fuck you. Uh, get out of here. Sometimes you got to lead by example, and those people get the point. That's what worked for me. Outstanding. I think your speed is literally dying. It seems like it. It seems like it, actually. I don't fucking know. Give it, we're going to give it a fucking couple minutes. Just, uh, people who are obese had significant mood boosts along with the, the energy, too. They hate being overweight. It's overwhelming for a lot of people who recognize the problems associated with obesity. It really is. Uh, if this was posted a year ago, it would have been 175. Thankfully, I'm far better condition. 145. That's fucking amazing. Amazing. Oh, shit. We're frozen. Shit, shit, shit. Well, we're back. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, guys. I really don't. I don't fucking understand what's going on. Uh, encountered you at 260. Now I'm down to 235. That's fucking outstanding, Mandel. Outstanding. Uh, throttling your <laughs> throttling your connection? Possibly. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's running through YouTube. It's running through StreamYard. So StreamYard might be fucking throttling my connection. We'll see. Uh, it's about time we're on picking up his phone and dials his ISP uh, and let them all out of this shit. So. Anyway. Uh, la, 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 la. I'm telling you, it's, it's bugged Allen. It could be. That's no shit. It could be. Uh, I, I, I wonder oftentimes about you like that. So I tell you what, though. Uh, if I've been about 45 minutes, and obviously this time, Alan, can you please hit the, uh, hit the weight ratio again? Uh, I think I know it, but I want, want to be certain. Sure. Give me one second. I'm actually, I'm actually going to do that real quick. Here we go. And what we're going to do is we are going to share the screen, share screen, Chrome. Boom, boom. All right, folks, this is a waste to hip ratio calculator. So we're going to go on uh, measurements. We're going to go imperial inches, 70 inches for me. My good day. Uh, that's hip, waist to hip ratio, waist to hip ratio, oh, waist to height ratio. Waste height calculator. Waste height calculator. Here we go. So it seems to be doing better now. We'll see. So anyway, five feet, ten inches tall. Waist, last measurement was 29. Actually, I'll do 30 because I have just eaten food. Male, age, city, not 520. Sometimes I feel like that. Boom. Okay. So I'm healthy slim. Now, if you're 43 to 52%, that's healthy. Um, 53 to 57, overweight. 58 to 62, very overweight. And anything over 63 is morbidly obese. Okay. So that means that, say, you are 510. We'll go back. Say you're 510. And your waist measurement is 40 inches, you are overweight. If your waist measurement is 45 inches, you are morbidly obese. 43, very overweight. So 44, I think, would be it. Now, there's also a lot of data that shows that having a waist measurement of 40 inches, no matter who you are and what, how tall you are, is just not healthy for you unless you're extremely, extremely tall. But um, I do think we should also uh, take a strong look at what for the female. So let's say the average height and weight from the 5'4". Let's say, uh, let's say, I don't even want to guess what that's all it is. 
she's 33, I think, or 35, I don't fucking know. Uh, and I'm going to assume she's got a 50 inch waist. So, uh, she's obviously more really obese because for women, it seems smaller. For women, it's 58. Uh, 58. And that's because women are less likely to have visceral fat than men. But, uh, so, basically, you take your waist measurement, two inches above your belly button, and then you divide it by the same increment measurement as that you take for your hip. And that gives you the fucking thing. So, uh, I like to think of optimistically obese. We did have bad weather where we were. We had some tornadoes yesterday and stuff like that. So that could be the issue. There could be some like issues with the fucking landline and issues with the line and stuff like that. Uh, Alan, can you? And that's that's my got to. So it is. It could be a fucking issue that we uh, were having issues because of the weather we had yesterday. With that said, though, with that said, I'm going to call this a fucking day. I because I. I think it works better during the day. I will be live tomorrow during the day. I will release it out just so people can see it. Uh, it'll be on all the channels and everything like that, just like it was again. But it'll be about, uh, I think we'll be live at 1.30 tomorrow uh, in the afternoon. And tomorrow we're probably going to do one of the hashtags. Uh, we're probably going to do the straight fat acceptance uh, tomorrow. Weird Sophia just around the same time. Sus. Eh, we'll see. I don't fucking know. Take care, take care, everybody. And again, my, my apologies about the fucking connection, but it could be from the storms we had yesterday. We had some tornadoes by Fort Myers, which is right across the fucking bridge. So hope everybody has a great day. Goddamn.